All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Achieve Anything Now, the Master Key to Business and Personal Success uh, Advanced Course. This is, of course, uh, session number two of the advanced course. So happy to have everybody with us this tonight. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for uh, spending a late evening on a Wednesday at 9 o'clock again. So we're just going to jump right in, and as always here, do a quick review as soon as uh, I get my technical piece down here and grab my mouse. Hang on one second. So uh, there we go. So we are going to jump straight in this evening. So let's start here, which is the whole purpose for the course is, uh, you know, for you to develop the self-awareness to use these emotional release strategies to help you face the problems of everyday life, right? This course fills the gap between going to the seminars and then doing the coaching and in between the coaching, what do you do when you actually sit down at your desk today or you wake up and you go, ah, I got this head trash. What am I going to do with it? So, and remember your success formula, A minus B equals C. Everything grows in proportion between uh, your assets and your liabilities, they always grow in proportion. So we want to decrease this so we have more of this and more of this without ever needing to have uh, more energy output. So questions and distinctions. I got a couple questions this week. I always welcome those. So please keep them coming because it's great learning. So somebody asked me this week in the email, they said, hey, how do I know which release to use? Do I use timeline or do I use the basic course releases? So I'm going to say there's a couple different ways to handle that. The first one, of course, is to use both. The simplest way to do it is just to ask your unconscious mind which one it wants to use. You just scroll through, you know, if you're clearing up anger or sadness or fear, guilt, limiting decisions, do you want to do, do it through timeline work or do you want to do the basic course? So part of it is just your preference. Um, I use both regularly, for sometimes for no reason other than just to flip back and forth, just to do something different from now and then because the brain likes variety so it doesn't become too routine. The second way that's a little bit more uh, left brain, right? The first one I would just say is intuitive, just whichever one you want. But um, the second one is this, which is if, remember that your brain will bring up things for you to clear visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically. So visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically, if it's something that's visual, that's the cue that we're looking for. If it's something that's visual, and let's just say it's something that happens when you were a kid or something way back from uh, your childhood, or uh, like today I was actually thinking about uh, this in terms of some uh, some health. I was driving back from my chiropractor and I just started thinking, you know, I, I have, I'm, I'm working to shed this last 10 pounds so I can get in my optimum uh, marathon uh, uh, weight uh, to train because I got a huge marathon at the end of the year. So I really want to get in shape and drop these last 10 pounds to be really optimal for that. And all of a sudden I was thinking, you know what, I kind of fought my weight here and there. And um, yes, I'm aware of my language there. And I was like, you know what, my sisters are heavy. And all of a sudden, my unconscious mind said, you know what, because I was just driving, kind of zoned out. And all of a sudden, I said, you know what, and my mom is heavy. And you know what, my mom's mom had a weight issue. She was really heavy. And I'm like, you know what, it never even occurred to me after 48 years now, 49 years. Gee, unconscious mind, how many generations ago did this whole thing start? And, and the, the numbers eight and 10 kept popping in my head. So I just said, great, unconscious mind, store that for later. There's something there 10 years ago, handed down to me genealogically. You know, my little five-year-old with big fat crayons was trying to tell me, here's the root cause. Because I just said, hey, when was the very first event when whatever decision was made to have this be passed down? It was like eight, 10, eight, 10, eight, 10. And you always take the one that's farthest back. So I said, great, 10 generations ago. Perfect. So I haven't cleared it up yet, but tomorrow when I do, because I've been on the phone all day, but tomorrow when I do my clearing work, I'm going to specifically clear that up and I will throw in timeline work because that was the place where my brain went and said, hey, 10, 10 generations ago was handed down to my mom's side of the family. I don't know what's there, but that's also why we build rapport with the unconscious mind so that we can let it go there because remember, it knows what it needs to clear up for us to be whole and healed and complete. So if you have a visual 
representation of something that pops in your head, that's a great cue. If it's something from your childhood, we did a little bit of the timeline before, I think we're going to cover that again here, you know, zero to seven or before, I would always use timeline, always. So uh, what happens when I'm releasing the same thing over and over? I had somebody tell me that as well. There are actually several reasons for that. Remember that when you set a goal in place, you put your obstacles in place and those obstacles come out mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And uh, there's a great book called Finding the Third Eye. There's actually seven different bodies. There's, there's the above the heart, uh, or there's, there, there's what's, what's in the heart chakra, there's what's above the head in the crown chakra, then there's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, etheric, and astral. And some of those are outside of your body. That's where you hear people say, oh, I can see their aura. Some of those um, bodies are outside of us. And so remember that you could actually be clearing things up in different contexts. So if you have a self-confidence issue, but you're thinking about business, you may have a self-confidence issue in relationships. It might be the same limiting thing of I can't or I'm not. It's just in a different context. It could be in one of the different bodies. Like I just said, it could be the physical body, the mental body, the etheric body, the astral body, whatever. Or it could just be a different energy. Uh, maybe it's an energy of anger of a limiting decision. And so you clear up that up with sadness, but the guilt isn't unpacked until much later. And then it's the same thing. And then the guilt is unpacked because that's connected to something else that you're clearing up later. So just know that, that it's okay if you tend to start to repeat some things because that's just fine. We maybe just be clearing up in different contexts, different bodies or different energies. The other thing is this which is it could be that you're not relaxed enough. Remember that relaxation equals rapport. So if you're having something that's in a specific context coming up over and over again, or a same limiting decision in a specific area coming up over and over again, it might just be that you're trying to do it to left brain. You haven't really sat down, listened to the tapes, truly relaxed down into that meditative state, so that then you really let your unconscious mind release it. You're trying to do the process too consciously. So remember, you know you're doing this well if you don't really know what it is. Like I said, eight, 10 generations ago, but I don't quite know what it is yet. I shouldn't know what it is. If I try to make it up now consciously, it's probably not going to be as good as if I just go into the meditative state, do the breathing, tap on my third eye, meditate on the light, fully relax, then get into the limiting decision, uh, uh, release audio, really drop down, get relaxed. And then when it comes into my head, just like that from the unconscious mind, that's when I know it's good to clear it up. So if you're having a, a hard time clearing up the same thing over and over again, uh, make sure that you're really relaxing as deep as possible when you're doing the work. And that's going to be critical for some of the upcoming dichotomy work. So that being said, couple reviews for the week. So let's just do a, or a couple learnings from last week. So let's jump into a quick review. So remember what's timeline? Timeline is just your individual way of sorting the past and the future inside your head. There's two, oops, excuse me. There's two different ways to do it. There's in time and there's through time. And the purpose of timeline work is to accelerate the release of an entire gestalts, which are just collective groups of memories. Uh, so instead of just taking one piece out, we're taking, wiping out this entire line, right? Like a whole huge chunk. We're just wiping that whole thing out of the, of, of the neurology. So there's in time, which I just said, remember that in time people, it, it, your timeline goes straight through your head. So the, some of the tendencies of that, oops, excuse me, I'm having a hard time with the mouse tonight. Some of the tendencies of that are of course living right in the moment, uh, always being emotionally associated right? Feeling your emotions. Um, you tend to be late a lot. Being on time and in time stresses you out um, versus through time. Through time, people move through time sequentially. Their timeline usually goes from left to right in relationship to their body. Mine used to come like this and then curve straight up like this, but I always had a hard time seeing what was in front of me in my future. That's because my future went way off to the right 
Then I changed my timeline because we can do that. So now my timeline comes from behind me kind of like this and it goes right around my head like this and then it swerves right in front of my face and goes straight out into the future so I can always see where I'm going now. I have a much clearer future. I know exactly what's going on in my business, what's coming up the next two years, what I'm working to, to grow and evolve to. So timeline is really great because we can move it around to either be in the moment, more relaxed, or be through time. Uh, so that's the power of the timeline. So real quick, in our psychology, remember that we have the concept of these emotional events, significant emotional events, and they get linked together into what we call a gestalt. And that gestalt starts with the very first event, the root event back here that everything else kind of gets linked on to as we go through life. And gestalts, for all general purposes, for uh, what we're doing here, uh, Massey, in his book, The People Puzzle, said that a gestalt had basically three different parts. Zero to seven was this imprint period from when you were born all the way out till you're about seven years old. And that's when you're just a straight unconscious mind. There's no filters. You learn language and you associate it straight into emotional events. Then your conscious mind develops and we start to model key people towards and away from in our life from 7 to 14. We either model towards or away from mom and dad, what we like and we don't like, or the key, key uh, parental figures. And then 14 to 21 is that awkward teenage socialization phase where everybody's leaving mom and dad in the dust and they start comparing themselves to everybody else at school. Right? That's why uh, junior high is always so tough because all of a sudden everybody's comparing themselves to everybody else and posturing. And if your shoe is untied, oh my gosh, you're the butt of every joke for the day at school. It's really a tough time. And then, of course, um, the unconscious mind, remember some of the prime directives, it knows what you, it needs to release for you to be whole and healed and complete. And it's like a little five-year-old or a three-year-old with five big fat crayons trying to draw specific instances of life on a piece of paper. So it tends to give us things that are metaphorical. It works in pictures, symbols, metaphors. So if it ends up giving us something before zero to seven in the womb, that's okay. It's just a metaphorical representation so we can let go of those negative unresolved events. And, um, and then it could be something like I just said, genealogical. Or maybe it's something past life. I'm not asking you to believe in past lives or believe in something handed down to you generation to generation to generation, except there are patterns there. And, um, but it's just the unconscious mind's representation of what we need to clear up so we can be more whole and healed and complete. All right. So charging forward, uh, when we actually do the timeline processes, it's really simple. I'm gonna annotate here real quick again and just walk through it. Um, basically, you just ask if it's okay for you to clear up this limiting decision today and for you to be aware of it consciously. Hopefully all of you went through the audios this week, so have some questions. And then just say, great, float up above now. And we're just gonna say, what's the very first event, the root event, which when disconnected will allow you to let go of all these events, right? Going back one space, Oops, I can't do it. You know, what's that very first event? And then what we do is we take that very first event. Oops, where's my cursor? Come on, hello, where am I at? Oh. Hang on, technical error. Oh, you're kidding me. My mouse actually quit, hang on. <laughs> Teach me to change the batteries. One second. All right, that's why I have an alternate mouse. <laughs> so, wasn't prepared with batteries, but I was prepared with another mouse. So we're gonna float right, oops, float right up above now and say, great, what's the very first event, the root event, which when disconnected will allow you to let go of, of all those events, right? All those emotions and all the events all the way back to now. And then we go back above that event and remember that it could be, I will just say, if you were to know, was it before, during, or after your birth? If it's after your birth, what age? If it was before your birth, was it in the womb or before? It was in the womb what month? If it was before um, that, was it past life or genealogical? And what age were you? How many generations ago or how many past lives ago? So no matter where it is, we're going to float back. So we're right above the event, looking down on the event. And then we're going to ask ourselves, what is there to learn from that? The learning of which will allow us to let go of those emotions easily and effortlessly. 
And then we go back here above the event and before the event ever happened. And then we just say, great. Notice when the emotions release, you float down into the event, looking through your own eyes with those new learnings. Make sure that they're gone. You float right up back up here before. You let that infinite source of love, healing energy come right down into your head. You float back through the timeline, all the way back towards now and then out in the future if you want. And then you just come all, oops, you just come all the way back towards now. And then you come down in the room and process complete. So hopefully there's no questions on that. Uh, if you do, please take a moment and jot those down. And uh, like I said, my apologies for this being a little choppy here uh, with, with my mouse issue. But um, uh, take one moment while I clear this up. And um, uh, please uh, write any questions down so far. All right. Moving forward, so let's get into some of the new audios for this week, all right? So this week, instead of going in the past and clearing some things up, this week we're actually gonna do some future work and we're gonna release anxiety. So remember that anxiety is a derivative of fear and anxiety is a fear of the future. So if you think about it, uh, all you need to do to create anxiety is think about pulling out of your driveway tomorrow morning, driving down the street, and getting in an accident before you get to work. Now, take that picture and notice the anxiety that you may have about it. I just had a little kind of a thing in the pit of my stomach. And just erase that picture in your mind. Just close your eyes real quick. You know, focus on the light, meditate it, push it back behind you, all the way back behind your head. Push it all the way back there. Make everything white inside your head. White, 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 white. Release it, let it go. Push it back behind you. Open up your eyes. So now that it's gone, <laughs> right? We want to pay attention to that. So anxiety is an emotional indicator that you let something sneak out here into your future, this future event, the way you don't want it to be. You're seeing, hearing, or feeling it the way you don't want it to be. With the example I just used, if there's any pinch of anxiety, now do this instead. Imagine pulling out of your drive in the morning, nice and comfortable in your car, listening to that favorite song of yours in a really great mood. Imagine yourself checking all your mirrors or, or getting out of your condo. I know one of our guys is in New York City, whatever that is. And imagine just having the, the most wonderful, relaxing drive or subway ride, whatever it is, into work having a huge smile on your face and just imagine picturing yourself walking in the office with a huge smile on your face, totally safe, knowing it's going to be an amazing, incredible day, maybe even a couple minutes early because you're feeling fresh and energized because maybe you just did some clearing work, hint, hint. And where's the anxiety now? Is it there? Has it disappeared? As you see, think, and hear your future the way you want it to be, anxiety disappears. So, all we need to do for anxiety, literally, oops, excuse me, is, um, oops, excuse me, is literally float right up above now and imagine that thing that gives you anxiety and then float out all the way past it, stop, turn around, look back towards now, seeing it the way you want it to be, seeing, hearing, and feeling this with a positive, successful outcome and ask yourself, what is there to learn from that? The learning of which will allow you to let that go easily and effortlessly. And the anxiety disappears just like that. And then you just come all the way back towards now on your timeline, watching all the people and events realign themselves all the way back to now as you achieve that goal. It's so simple. You probably just did it right there without even realizing it. Eventually, uh, all you need to do is just change this picture from the way you don't want it to be, the way you want it to be, and the anxiety drops away just like that. So... Eventually, you won't even need to do this little timeline process of floating up and doing it. You can just do it instantaneously. So that's going to be the first new audio this week, which I would love for you to listen to. Think about something that gives you anxiety. And I mean, think about the anxiety maybe of having too much money and then just let that go. So you're handling tons and tons of money easily and effortlessly managing all your new incredible wonderful investments right enjoying them seeing the money coming in with huge big bright smiles on your face how cool would that be right so practice seeing things the way you want them to be um so this literally takes no time so that's our first one 
The second audio you're going to get this week is how to actually put a goal in your future. So I want to uh, d d d skip all this here for just a second. See, I had to say it the way I wanted to be. Just skip all this for a second. And let me just put this together. Uh, I was talking to a couple of guys here, or a couple of participants before the call. What would happen is this starts to come together. Up until now, we've just been focusing on emotional release. But what if we could float up above now, let all the anxiety go by putting a positive goal in our future and then watching all the people and events line themselves up all the way back to now to make that happen and then let our unconscious mind release anything from the past or from the future that we perceive might be hindering us from this goal, how fast can we drive from here to here with no speed bumps? Really, really fast. If we take all the speed bumps, the anger, sadness, fear, guilt, limiting decisions out of the way, what happens? We clear up that resistance and we just go, we're right there. Just like I was giving that example at the, at the beginning of, of uh, the call today uh, in the Q&A piece. So now we're going to start to be proactive with some timeline audios of putting some things out there in front of us that we actually want to achieve. And then when we go in and we automatically just clear up all the resistance to it, that's how the beautiful things happen because they just happen quicker, better, faster, easier. That's the beauty of release work. When we program what we want and then we release it specifically, it happens so much quicker and easier. So now comes the exciting stuff because we're also starting to, besides the release work, put and program a little bit of the assets moving towards what we want to have and what we want to create. So this is how we put a goal in your future. This is, of course, all in the audio meditation. I'm going to guide you, your, you and your unconscious mind straight through it. Basically, what we're going to do is first, I'm just going to ask you to bring to mind your SMART goal and the very last thing. So I'm going to use the example I used before. My SMART goal this Monday morning was I have successfully scheduled one new introductory coaching session today February 20th, 2017. I think I actually said one qualified uh, uh, intro session. So that was my SMART goal. The very last thing that needed to happen in order for me to know that I've achieved that is I block out 10 one-hour sessions in my calendar every day, or every week, excuse me, not every day, every week. And I went in and literally saw myself changing one of those for this week from intro session to a name, and then writing intro after that and typing in their phone number and typing in their uh, an email address to give them a reminder of when our introductory coaching session was going to be. So it's a very specific, very last thing that needs to happen in order for me to know that I've achieved that goal of setting up one intro session was me literally seeing me schedule it today in my iCalendar. And, and I was seeing, hearing, and feeling it going, man, I can't believe that happened. This is so cool. And then I said, oh, man, I can't believe that happened. So I had to let that go too so I would believe it. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring to mind your SMART goal. Where are you right now? I'm going to bring to mind your SMART goal and the very last thing that needs to happen. And then I'm going to ask you to float right up above now. And looking through your own eyes, see, hear, and feel it, the very last thing. Then we're going to ask you, that's like in time, right? You're in the moment. Then we're going to ask you to step out of the picture so you're not looking through your own eyes anymore. You're going to look at yourself in the picture. So I was, had to look at myself sitting at my desk, scheduling the appointment. First, I was looking through my own eyes sitting at my desk, but then I stepped out of the picture. So I saw myself sitting at the desk, scheduling the appointment, and then we're going to take, remember our breaths from our breathing, our, our ha breaths. We're going to take four breaths. And when you exhale, you're going to breathe all the energy that you have inside. Everything that, you, that all the energy that you created by seeing, hearing, and feeling, you're just going to breathe that energy through your third eye into the picture with four deep breaths. Four times. And now all you're going to do is just grab it like a suitcase and float all the way out into the future with your picture, trusting your unconscious mind. This is why we build rapport until you're right above that moment where the goal happens. 
and your unconscious mind will know when that is. So you just take the picture, still disassociated from it, and you just float out into the future to the time when that goal is going to happen. I just went out to later on in the day. And then um, once you're there, I'm just going to say on the count of three, you just drop that goal right into your future. Boom. And you just let it drop here. And as it drops into your timeline, you'll notice some ripples. It's kind of like a, a, a drop into a pond, right? You've seen that metaphorical picture all the time or the real picture of a raindrop uh, falling in the puddle and it sends ripples out into the future. Well, it's also going to send ripples all the way back to now. So we're just going to say, ah, oh, notice as you drop the goal into your timeline, all the ripples going all the way out in the future, and then turn around and look towards now and notice all the events, all the ripples. We're just going to say, notice all the people and events realigning themselves all the way back to now to help you achieve that goal. And then you just come right back above now, float back down into the room, and then uh, open up your eyes and uh, take a simple action to move forward towards your goal. That's it. It's super simple. So I'll walk through it a little bit more congruently. So all we're going to do is put a goal in your future. You're going to drop in the eight-minute track. It's time going to take you eight minutes. You just say, great, bring to mind your smart goal and float right up above now and picture the very last thing looking through your own eyes and see, here and feel it the way you want it to be. And we're just going to, great, step out of the picture so you see yourself in the picture. And we're going to take four deep breaths. And breathe all that energy inside, all that emotion and energy inside that you see here and feel it in the picture. And I'm just going to say, great, take that picture in black and white, turn it all, take it all the way out to the future, right above your unconscious mind knows when, all the way out to that successful time in the future when it's going to happen. And just watch as you drop the picture right down into your timeline and notice the ripples going out in the future and notice all the ripples coming back to now as all the people in the event realign themselves all the way back to now. And then go ahead and come back to now, noticing all the ways of being, doing, having, all the way back towards now. And then when you're back above now, just go and float right back down in the room, open up your eyes and come back into the room. It's just that simple. So go ahead and write down any questions you have on that process uh, real quick. Uh, the only distinction I would make, obviously, is I barely went out of my timeline between now and later on today when I was doing my daily goal. But if I'm doing something between now and December 31st, 2017, that might be way out here into the future, and it might take me a while to go out and come back, but that's okay. Um, totally good. That's another anxiety release is if you go all the way out to the very end of your future timeline and then go back before it, turn around and look back towards now. After the end of your timeline, there's no anxiety because it's after the end of your timeline. So you can just let all the anxiety go from your whole entire life, seeing your whole life the way you want it to be. That's kind of trippy. You can do that too, but uh, that's for later maybe. So go ahead and write down any questions that you have with that process. So the first audio today is going to be releasing anxiety. The second audio today is going to be putting a goal in your future. And the third and fourth audio today are going to be two of the forgiveness techniques that I promised uh, from, from the, uh, the basic course. And then, uh, you know, the first basic forgiveness technique is super simple. It's just six lines, six lines. I forgive you. I forgive me. I love you. I love me. I let it go. It's done. Um, these next two forgiveness techniques are more in depth and you can record or uh, excuse me, um, you can forgive greater numbers of people. Now, I want you to just keep one thing in context here real quick. Remember, we're talking about timeline, and we're talking about past lives, genealogical, right? Ideally, you could take these all the way back to the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, if you believe in that metaphorically, whatever that is. Um, but the, the, I want you to keep the timeline and going back to the beginning of time um, uh, in your mind. Because remember, I, I'm there's the courses put together specifically. First, we do an individual, and then we do groups of things to accelerate the process. The first forgiveness technique I just said, I forgive you, I forgive me, I love you, I love me, et cetera, et cetera. That's for a single person for a single event. This is going to be more group oriented, these last two. There's a short form and a long form, depending upon how many people you want to forgive. So remember that forgiveness is not something that we do for other people. We do it for ourselves to get well and move on. So we're not asking you to say that it's okay to condone someone's behavior. 
Obviously, if uh, you know somebody cuts, knock on wood, somebody cuts in front of somebody and causes a car accident, you know, you don't have to drive next to that person anymore. If somebody steals your stuff, right? You're not saying it's okay to steal. You're just forgiving them so you can let it go. But then, goodness gracious, you're not going to go do something with that person again and give them an opportunity to steal your stuff again. So remember that forgiveness is just your forgiving yourself so that you can be more whole and healed and complete and move on. And when, uh, I totally encourage you to draw appropriate boundaries whenever you draw, need to draw appropriate boundaries so you never have to be in a position to need to forgive somebody again because they do something that goes against uh, something that doesn't work for you, okay? So moving forward with the forgiveness aspects here, um, this is, I just covered it, right? The general forgiveness from the basic course. The second forgiveness, this comes from the ancient Hawaiian spiritual uh, concept called Huna. And the lady who made this forgiveness, uh, her name was Morna Nalamaku Simeona. She was um, uh, 1913 to 1992. She was recognized as a Kahuna Lapa'au, uh, uh, that's Hawaiian for healer in Hawaii. And she taught this updated version of Ho'opono Pono. That's the Hawaiian version of it, which means uh, pono means to be right with somebody. So obviously, if we're forgiving somebody, that means we're right with them and they're right with us. When it's given twice in Hawaiian, pono, pono, that means that you're doubly right <laughs> with them. So it's even better than being right with each other. You're doubly right with each other. You're right with them and they're definitely right with you. And the ho-o just means to make right. So ho-o, pono, pono means to make doubly right um, uh, with yourself and another person. You can find Ho'oponopono anywhere online. A lot of people have recorded this audio. Uh, Joe Vital has done it with another guy named Hu Lin. There's all sorts of places. Uh, this is, is a common forgiveness technique uh, that's taught throughout the United States. She, she taught it throughout the United States, uh, Asia, and Europe. And uh, she was a very important promoter of the science of Huna. Huna is just coming um, a little bit more to light nowadays. Uh, my NLP trainer uh, also teaches HUNA because um, there are some, some interesting psychological aspects of it that um, we can go into at a different time. But um, what's important for this is this is the forgiveness right here. So you remember uh, we do the conscious mind, unconscious mind, higher self. So whether you call it spirit, super consciousness space, we're saying, hey, higher self up here. And remember, we have to have a rapport between the conscious and the unconscious mind, collapse that dichotomy before we can have that become a conduit to the higher self. So we're saying, and think of the timeline concept here. Dear spirit, super conscious, please locate the origin of my feelings and thoughts, mental, emotional release of this issue, let's just say around my weight. So basically we're saying, hey, super conscious, go all the way back to the very first event, the root event, which would disconnect to allow me to let all these old thoughts and feelings go around my weight. Kind of sounds like timeline, right? Take each and every level, layer, area, and aspect of my being into this origin, into this very first event, the root event, which would disconnect to allow us to let all this stuff go. Analyze it, unconscious mind. You have an unconscious uh, blueprint right, or uh, of us being whole and healed and complete. So just analyze it and resolve it perfectly, whole and healed and complete with God's truth, right? The blue black spot where, where there is no dichotomy. It's, it's pure truth. Come through all the generations of time and eternity, timeline, healing every incident and its appendages based on the origin, clearing up that entire gestalt. Please do it according to God's will, higher self until I am at the present, in the now, filled with light. Oh, imagine that light and truth. Infinite source of love, healing energy coming in through the top of your body, filling you up every, all the quantum space between all the space and between all the quantum aspects of your body until you're whole and healed and complete. We've done that before. Remember, meditate on the light from basic course. God's peace and love. Remember David Hawkins' highest levels of energy, peace and love. Forgive, you know, fill me with God's peace and love, forgiveness of myself for all my incorrect perceptions reframes, right? Forgiveness of every person, place, circumstance, and event which contributed to this, these feelings and thoughts. Basically, as I translate this based on timeline, it's basically one big timeline forgiveness release. So it'll go something like this, dear spirit, superconscious, 
Please locate the origin of my feelings and thoughts of my weight, whatever that is, the limitation I have. Take each and every level, layer, area, and aspect of my being back to this origin. I trust you unconscious mind to take me there. Analyze it and resolve it perfectly with God's truth. Come through all the generations of time and eternity, healing every incident and all of its appendages based on the origin. Please do it according to God's will until I am at the present, filled with light and truth. God's peace and love, forgiveness of myself for my incorrect perceptions, forgiveness of every person, place, circumstance, and events which contributed to this, these feelings and thoughts. It's pretty powerful, I'm telling you. You do this two, three, four times. It's an eight-minute meditation again. You do this two or three times, and then I threw a nice little huna, other huna prayer right on the end of it. And um, it's a really, really cool, cool forgiveness. So uh, this, is, I, this is probably my favorite out of all of them. So I really would love for you to give me some feedback on this next week and tell me how it goes. Because <laughs> I love this one. I love, 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 love it. So uh, this is going to be your third audio release uh, of the week. And then your, th oh, so excuse me. Go back one second. If you need, go ahead and write uh, any questions or, or things, anything that you have, uh, go ahead and write that down real quick. All right, now let's jump into the third forgiveness. All right, so the third forgiveness uh, I got from my NLP trainer, Matt James. I'm gonna give this uh, credit where credit is due. And it is a metaphor for a, uh, a stage. Uh, I've added, expanded that to be an open meadow, um, anything that you want. The important thing is you're above the event. Remember timeline. I'm trying to key all this together for you. Timeline where you're above the event, looking down on the event. So if you picture yourself in a studio, you're going to be like way up here in the, the uh, photo booth, looking down on the stage. Uh, if you're uh, uh, in a meadow, I'm going to say, look, you're going to be way up here on top of a cliff looking down at the people in a meadow. Um, you want to be up and looking down because that gets you into auditory kinesthetic uh, and NLP. The short version is eight minutes. The long version is 24 minutes. The short version you use to forgive a single person, that includes yourself, in any given age. Uh, I actually went back through, I think I told you this before, I went back through with, with uh, the short version and uh, my mom had made a page and a photo album for me a long time ago with every single picture that I had from first grade, second grade, third grade, you know, those horrible, horrible photos that nobody loves <laughs> from first grade, second grade, third grade, the school class pictures. I took every one, of, she put those all on one page for me. So I brought them up to my office. I taped them on the side of my uh, my uh, bookcase here so I could see him where I meditate. And I just went back and put myself on the stage or in the meadow and forgave myself at every single age. The aspects of myself that I didn't like looking back on myself, I forgave myself at every age. It was a great, wonderful exercise. Um, so you can use it to forgive yourself at any age. You can use it to forgive a single other person. Uh, you can use it to forgive a small group of the people, like everybody at work, or um, I could use it for my family, like my wife and my son and my daughter. Um, you could also use it to forgive a single object or a thing. I've put the whole world up on the stage before. That was a crazy trippy one. My unconscious mind one time I was doing this said, hey, let's put the whole world up there. So I forgave the whole world. I had a huge release that day. I, could, I felt it physically. It was a great release. Um, so this, let me be clear. I'm going to go through the, the talking you through it in just a second, but the short version is basically a quick eight minute, forgive yourself, forgive another person, forgive a, a group of people all in the same context or a single object or a thing. In the long version, uh, we go through calling up groups of people. So, uh, imagine we take this short version and we repeat it over and over and over again. So we call up your parents and then your husband and then past girlfriends and past boyfriends and then coworkers and then, then acquaintances and then people you know socially and then people from your past. And then, and then we just keep pulling up a grandma, grandpa, and we keep pulling up all sorts of past groups of people from relationships to people you went to school with to we just let your unconscious mind go through and bring up many, 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 many groups of people. Um, so the long version is great if you're just going to go for a walk and just say, I'm just going to forgive 
everybody or every aspect of myself, right? I could have, instead of doing this one at a time for first grade, second grade, third grade, I could have just pulled up first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, and done them all in one big clearing in 24 minutes instead of doing it over and over and over again for eight minutes. Um, I just did it a piece at a time, so I ended up doing it eight minutes at a time. So this is the process. It's super simple. Let me see if I, uh, nope, I didn't do that. Uh, so let me just talk you through it. Um, basically what you're going to do is I'm just going to ask you to, in your unconscious mind, can follow along right now. You can even just do it if you want. All I'm going to do is ask you to close your eyes and imagine you're on top of a cliff looking down in the meadow or up in a movie theater looking down on a stage. And all I'm going to ask you to do is have that infinite source of love healing energy Come right down in through the top of your head, all the way down to the tips of your toes and fill your entire body up until it overflows out the top of your head, letting any dark spots go, letting the infinite source of love, healing energy fill you up in your entire body, you know, cascading down your arms all the way back up until you're coated in a light coat of love, healing energy, and the light is you and you're the light. And then I'm just going to ask your unconscious mind to bring that person or if we're doing the long version, groups of people up on stage that you want to forgive. It's okay if you don't know who they are. It's okay if consciously you go in and say, hey, I just want to forgive my mom for this. Great. And then what we do is we create a connection. We flow that into the source of love, healing energy uh, out your forehead, your third eye, or your heart, or both. And you flow it right down into the person on the stage. Have it flow right in through the top of their head. Go right down in through the top of your head and fill them up until they're filled with the light and they're whole and healed and complete. And then we just say, great, is there anything that you need to tell them until you're both whole and healed and complete? And say, great, is there anything they need to tell you until you're whole and healed and complete? That's positive, right? Creates positive healing. And then once you're both whole and healed and complete, you just imagine that infinite source of love, healing energy above the top of your head again and notice as it turns into a big blade of light, like a big sword of light, and if it's applicable, you just cut the cord between you and them, that infinite source of love, healing energy that you have flowed back and forth to make you both whole and healed and complete. You just cut that cord and notice as the, the stage just disappears. And then you notice that energy coming right back into you until you're whole and healed and complete, having let that go, that old connection go. And, uh, and then when you're ready, you just open your eyes and come back in the room, whole and healed and complete. It's super simple, but it's very, 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 very powerful. Very, very powerful. So that's the forgiveness technique. So I'd like for you to try the short version and the long version. If you do the long version, since it's a little bit longer, 24 minutes, I'd encourage you to maybe do it when you go for a walk or something like that so that you can just kind of follow along with it uh, but not fall asleep. Okay, so if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write them down. Uh, and then we just, then I'm going to do an introduction to dichotomies and we'll be done. All right, so coming back. So you're going to get four audios this week so far. You're going to get uh, clearing anxiety, putting a goal in your future, forgiveness number two, which is the Morna Simeona one right here, and then we're going to do forgiveness number three, which is the short version, and then actually that's uh, five. Excuse me, not four. You're going to get five because you're going to get the short version of this forgiveness number three, and a long version of forgiveness number three. So that's five new audios this week. So it's going to be a lot to listen to, but I'd encourage you to please go through them. So up to this point, we've covered the top six clearing tools, uh, the first six of them in totality up to now. So we've cleared up. Let's do a quick review. In the basic course, we cleared up anger, sadness, fear, guilt, limiting decisions. Those are the first five. We cleared up anger, sadness, fear, guilt, limiting decisions with audios that were for singular events. And then beginning with the advanced course, you have another set of audios to clear up anger, sadness, fear, guilt, limiting decisions with um, timeline work. The sixth clearing tool is forgiveness. And there are three forgiveness tools. There's the short version, I forgive you, I forgive me, I love you, I love me, I let it go, now it's done. There's the Morna Simeona, which is the timeline piece. And then there's more of the energy one with groups of people specifically, which is the stage version, forgiveness number three, and there's a short and a long version. 
So with that, we are totally 100% complete with those first clearing tools. We also have two derivatives. One is clearing up fear of the future, which is anxiety. And then we started a proactive audio, which is uh, putting your goal in your future. So hopefully that brings clarity now in everything that we've covered, if you remember the house. So we only really have one clearing tool left, plus another fun exercise to program our future called the Prometheus induction. And I think we get into that next week. So the last clearing tool that we have is a dichotomy. So I wanted to give a definition of a dichotomy. A dichotomy is a division or a contrast between two things that are or are represented as being opposed or entirely different. Everybody knows and can understand what dichotomy is with this next screen. Yes, this is one of the most basic dichotomies, uh, the most universal symbolism of dichotomy that there is. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. A dichotomy is something as simple as hot and cold. On a battery, there's positive and a negative pole. Um, there's light and dark. There's summer, winter, fall, spring. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, your eyes are open or they're closed. There's masculine energy and feminine energy. And so the yin yang represents masculine and feminine energy. This can also be a directed or a fundamental aspect of our psyche. One of these contexts could be left brain, right brain. Right, left brain is is um, uh, the yang, which is male energy, which is uh, listed as the omega or force. It's our intellect, our thought. Uh, it's activation. It makes things happen. It's um, conquest, control, projection, whatever you, it is there. And then there's the opposite, which is um, the yin, which is feminine or female energy. Um, and it's entropic change, it's uh, feelings, it's physical materialization of things, potential. There's a reason why they call it Mother Earth, because it's constant change, that's emotion. And these two do a dance together, right? It's, it's always masculine and feminine energy together. Uh, they say, uh, you know, before all time or anything began, it was a blue-black spot. Everything was calm and the world was perfectly still, longer than forever. Uh, louder than the silence, uh, hotter than the most deep cold. So um, the the um, um, oh now it just flitted out of my mind. The um, Tao Te Ching is nothing but dichotomies. All that is but isn't uh, called by a name, but as soon as it's called a name, it isn't right. So. Um, the important thing to know about this is that masculine feminine energy or positive negative poles, these dichotomies of life in the human psyche, they come up as the shadow self, right? Because nobody is 100% pure. So uh, David Hawkins called this devotional non-duality, which is collapsing these. Remember how I said everything goes proportionately? There's a portion of us that's light, but there's a little part of us that's the shadow self. And everything that's dark, there's still a little part that's light. And so these two swirl around and they grow in proportion with each other. That's the entire energy of the universe is masculine and feminine energy. That's why the universe is ever expanding is because these forces of masculine feminine energy just keep growth. They keep feeding off of each other and momentum creates momentum. And so that's, what a dichotomy is. Enlightenment, hypothetically, comes from collapsing dichotomies. We've talked about collapsing some of these dichotomies, right? There's the conscious, unconscious mind. We collapse those dichotomies so that there's perfect stillness. We collapse once the conscious, the unconscious mind are collapsed. We, we go outside of ourselves with the light, right? Once we meditate on the light and expand to the universe, we're collapsing the dichotomy of the oneness of the conscious, unconscious mind with the universal consciousness itself so that we're one with everything. We are one and one is everything. And then there is no dichotomy. Uh, uh, we've collapsed there. So in 
um, I'm sorry, I forgot I had this in here. So remember, first we collapse the conscious, unconscious mind. And once these are done, then we collapse these two with the higher self. And then we're one with the universe, so to speak. Um, so what they usually don't tell you about the yin yang, right? If this represents the universe, so it's ever growing and ever expanding, is at this tiny little point right here in the very center of it. Imagine this rotating. The very, very center where it's absolute stillness is what they call the Wu Ji. This is metaphorically the blue black spot that when you meditate on it, it's 6.8 cycles per second. It's absolute perfect truth because there is no dichotomy. It's where you're connected in the purest form and you are the purest form of being on the energetic or the spiritual level. I'm not talking the physical level or the mental emotional level, but in the spiritual level, this spot right here in the very, very center represents um, that very center calmness connection with everything you want with everything and everything is one with you but you're 100 percent enlightened because there is no good bad there's nothing it's total enlightenment and they call that the wuji but when we meditate it's the blue black spot so you say okay james what does this possibly have to do with me and us uh this is the beautiful thing there's a great meditation that i'm giving you this is the last meditation it's the blue black spot it's finding this place so I'm just going to talk you through, let me see how I did this. Yeah, okay, I'm going to talk you through the meditation here real quick. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you, and you can just close your eyes and follow along with this metaphorically if you want. I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and notice where you are right now and float right up above now, right? float right up above you and fill yourself with the infinite source of love healing energy, Okay. Once you're full of that infinite source of love, healing energy, I'm just going to ask you to float up above now until you're above your little spot of where you are. And you're going to float above your house, above your block, above your county, above your, your uh, state, above the United States. And then you're going to see the world. And I'm just going to ask you to become one with all of those aspects you know, let that energy, imagine that flow, energy flow out of you until you encompass the entire world, let it flow all the way around the world and let it expand as the infinite source of love, healing energy. Let yourself just expand to encompass the moon and then the sun and then all the planets and then engulf the galaxy and keep going faster and faster, higher and farther back, higher and farther back, higher and farther back and keep going, keep going, keep going, higher and farther back until you, you become and you're one with the infinite source of the love healing energy with the entire light of the universe or the galaxies. And then those become little spots and then the galaxies and the galaxies. And if you look here on the screen, we're going to float all the way back until you're the whole infinite source of love healing energy with the entire universe, all the way up to the very edge of the universe, metaphorically inside your mind. So once you hit this edge of the universe, you're going to notice the masculine and feminine energies right? Yin and yang. I'm just going to ask you to notice those working together, creating the infinite source and the ever expanding universe. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to jump over to the other side of it to this blackness of nothing. And that's where you're going to see the blue black spot, the little blue black spot of truth. Cause outside of here, there is no dichotomy. And so then I'm going to expand, ask you to just expand and go straight into the very center of the blue black spot, the purple spot inside your mind. And it's going to be like probably honestly the most blissful place you've ever been in. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful and it's incredible. It's wonderful. And then once you've been there for a little bit, we're just going to ask you to release anything that's there, any, anything that your unconscious mind just wants to release into the place of the truth of the universe. Great. We're just going to ask your unconscious mind to just let go of it. So you're not even aware of it constantly. Just let it go. And then what we're going to do is once we're done with that, we're going to ask you to create that new dichotomy of how you want that to be. And then we're just going to come right up here back to the edge of the universe again, project that new dichotomy of perfect balance of whatever the issue or the problem was, whatever, project it straight back into the universe with the aspects of masculine and feminine energy so that they're in perfect unison with each other. They just swirl around and around in perfect energy and we're just going to have you float right back down into now, come back in the room, and that's it.
it's a it's an incredible i'm just telling you you just have to experience it i'll guide you the whole way through it's just an absolutely wonderful incredible incredible amazing i can't say it enough it's just a great great um 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 meditation um, now I will say this. Now this is just James Murphy's experience. You'll experience your own. Uh, when I came back from this little bit of meditation, I actually had a little bit of fear consciously later because I didn't want to come back. I was like, "Ooh, that's kind of weird, not wanting to come back." Um, but uh, that was totally okay. So then I just cleared up my time and stuff and let that go because um, that was just the ego speaking. Because uh, remember, if we collapse dichotomies, the ego can only survive in pleasure in pain. And so if it's not having a pleasure or a pain experience, the ego can't survive. So what we want to do is let it go. And um, so that way, um, uh, you just let it go. So that's what's really cool about that. So I love it. Let it go. And um, uh, it's just a great meditation. So that's, I think, meditation number six now that you're going to get. Uh, so please carve out some time for that. So... That is just a precursor because you can see now we can, or next week what we're going to do is um, accelerate our emotional release because now instead of taking one piece of anger or fear, one emotion, we can actually clear that up with timeline if it's a specific event. And then we can take that emotion of fear and do this meditation with a, with a couple new pieces we'll jump into next week. And you can just collapse your, collapse your entire dichotomy of fear. So you just blow out everything at once. It's like so cool and it's so amazing. But that's just a preview of next week. So please come to next week. You, please, please, please listen to this audio between now and next week. Because next week we're going to jump on to um, uh, uh, an advanced meditation on in using this concept so please please listen to this one a couple times if you can between now and next week because you're going to need it because next week we're going to expand uh, uh, into this meditation with even more specificity i'm going to add something to it okay so that being said these are all your audios there's going to be seven audios this week you're going to release anxiety you're going to have forgiveness number two and forgiveness number three the short and the long version um, we're going to, I don't think this one's here. That might be a typo, but we're going to place goal in your future. And, uh, we're going to do this one as well. So we're going to do the dichotomy exercise. So, um, I'm going to put all those in the Dropbox file. You'll get them by tomorrow along with the audio and the webinar for tonight. And, uh, as always enjoy the emotional release. Always remember to tell your unconscious mind. Thank you. And I think we're right at about an hour. So we are going to wrap up and go to Q and a. So uh, write down your questions real quick as I, I uh, stop this and come back to now.